Is it on? Is it on? I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Wound, published by Simon and Tuesday Saga Press. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press, and we are going to be reviewing The Phoenix Guards by Stephen Brust. Oh my gosh! This series, you guys, this fantasy series. Oh, Stephen Brust is the father of modern fantasy. He is just every... Fantasy, every wise-cracking fantasy hero you've got from Patrick Watt Rothfuss Quoth to the Lies of Locke Lamora crew to all of them, all of the Abercrombies, all of the Mark Lawrences, all of them, they all stem from Mr. Stephen Brust. They do. He is the father of all of that. The Phoenix Guards. I'm going to talk about this universe that Stephen Brust has created in all these books. Even Tad Williams says, Pay attention. Stephen Brust might be America's best fantasy writer. I can't really argue with that. The Phoenix Guards and all of these other books that I've got behind me here are all part of Stephen Brust's Dragaria universe. And let me go through this a little bit with you. So let's start with the Phoenix Guards itself. It's kind of a knockoff of the Three Musketeers. And we'll get into that a little bit later. 500 years after, Alexander Dumas, you know, he wrote a similar title. And then these books down here, kind of like The Man in the Iron Mask. This book behind me is kind of like The Count of Monte Cristo. And then these books over here, which are the best of the group, are about his Vladimir Taltos assassin series. Okay, and they're all set in the same fantasy realm of Dragiria. What about the Phoenix Guards? That's the one here we're here to talk about. Oh, look at that cover. You know I always talk about the covers. You know that I don't... Miss a cover here. That cover by Sam Rakeland is perfect. It sets the tone for this book absolutely magnificently. Because we've got one of our three musketeer guys right here. This is a swashbuckling adventure. We've got our main character, Cavern. Let's let's talk. Let's I, I want to just set up the groundwork of Dragiria first. We really do have to set up the groundwork of the realm of Dragiria before we talk about any of these books. So in Dragiria, it's kind of imagined France in the age of the Three Musketeers, in the age of the fencing master, swashbuckling adventurer types, our pirates, our assassins, our thieves, our, our musketeer guards, Imagine that setting, and you've got the setting, okay? Within Dragiria, there are 17 great houses, kind of different races. Like, each house is kind of its own race. And those 17 races slash houses are broken down into the Phoenix, the Dragon, the Lyorn, the Tyassa, the Hawk, the Desert, the Salmoth, Valista, Jerig, Ioric, the Creotha, the Yendi, the Orca, the Tekla, the Jigala, and the Etheria. And these books here behind me, as you can see, they're all named after those houses. These Vladimir Taltos assassin books are all named after those houses. And so if you want to just read the assassin books, uh, you know, they're, they're short reads here. And they're all after the, uh, you know, the dragon. But then we've got the Phoenix Guards. You know, Phoenix was one of the houses. And the Phoenix Guards, they're sort of like the policemen of Dragiria. They're sort of like the musketeers. And this book sort of is a reimagining of the three musketeers, but set in 
Stephen Bruss land of Dragiria, where he's got all of these races and all these things happening, all these political intrigues and everything going on, and all of these books, believe it or not, they weave together and they tie together so brilliantly. I just love this land. Every time I step foot into Dragiria, whether it's in the Assassin novels or the Three Musketeers things, I love it. So who are our Three Musketeers? Well, we've got Cavran, no, Cavrel. His name is Cavrel. He's sort of our Detarnia. Uh, is it Detarnia? Diardigan? I, you know what I'm talking about. The Alexander Dumas main musketeer guy. <clears throat> That's Kevrel. He's of the house Tyassa. And he goes off, just like at the beginning of The Three Musketeers, he goes off on his like little uh, solo adventure and he runs into the other musketeers. and the other. Uh, but they're actually called Phoenix. They're not called musketeers. They're called Phoenix Guards. And uh, yeah, so we've got Pell, Eric, and Tizendra are the ones that he meets. One of, you know... A, an awesome, an awesomely, just disgustingly, uh, brilliantly written, unbearably, fantastically, just I, I can't, every adjective you can think of to describe these these characters and the way that they just talk to each other and talk to everybody on the street that they meet. This is like I said, this is the grandfather. This book here, and the rest of the series. If you love the lies of Lakamora, this is the grandfather, the granddaddy father of that. You know, Scott Lynch, he was copying Stephen Brust. He really was. I mean, he was copying it. I mean, it's the same writing style, the same clever writing style. And I think Stephen Brust actually does it better. In fact, it's very, very, very stylized. In Stephen Brust's work. And, and so stylized, in fact, it actually kind of reads. And these these read these read pretty much like the lies of Locke Lamora. These read similar to Locke Lamora, but he also throws in that Alexander Dumas twist where um the characters are just like a they're like, hey, have you seen my new sword? I would love to see your new sword. Well, I am about to show you my new sword. Well, I am waiting for you to show me your new sword. Well, then let me get to showing you my new sword because it is very expensive. Well, how expensive was it? Well, let me tell you, I was about to tell you how expensive it was. I mean, this is the way the conversations go throughout the entire book. But, you know, they're a lot, way more clever than I just reenacted. And it's especially hilarious when the phoenix guards meet up with other people that they're like there's police they're the policemen of the of dragaria right and the, and it's especially hilarious when they get into conversations with people with this sort of like <clears throat> do you know why i am stopping you here on the street well no i do not well i was about to tell you well please tell me sir well, if you would stop talking for a minute, I would be happy to tell you. Well, then I have stopped talking, sir, and I am willing to listen to what you have to say. Well, I am glad that you are li willing to listen to what I have to say, because I've got a lot to say, and I am about to say it. Well, sir, I am willing, to, I am ready to listen to all of the things that you have to say. Well, the things I have to say are growing and growing and growing by the moment. I mean, this is the way the conversations go nonstop through this thing, and they just get more absurd and absurd and absurd to the point where they all make sense. But you just die and laughing at the end. And then they're such smart asses. They're partly doing it to be smart asses. All these, th there are Phoenix guards, our, our, you know, our, our Cavrell, Pell, Eric, and Tazendra, our, our main Phoenix guards. They're partly doing it just to be smart asses because they're smart asses everywhere they go. And they're always dueling and they're just, they're such great, swordsmen that nobody can um compete with them right i mean the phoenix guards are like the elite of the elite right and uh sometimes they don't let everybody know that they're phoenix guards at the time of the people are just like pop and people are just smart smart mouth and back and then you know they're like oh well i'm a phoenix guard and then people are like oh crap oh crap i just stepped in it i now i have now i've just called out one of the phoenix guards and now i've got to duel them and like I said, these Phoenix Guards, man, they are not to be messed with. They are not to be messed with. But anyway, this book, The Phoenix Guards, it's... I mean, if you read The Three Musketeers, it's kind of like a uh, a mashup of uh, Stephen Brust's Realm of Dragiria with uh, 
or Dragar Drag Dragaria with uh, the you know, the three musketeers. And it's absolutely just spectacularly delightful to read. I love it. I love it. And then once you're done with this, and it ends, there's got a lot of political, there's so much political intrigue, so many duels and fights and sword fights and betrayals and backstabbings and characters just not getting along, then getting along, being best friends, then hating each other, and uh, different heists and thieveries and assassinations, and then it all ends up in a big battle at the end. Just perfect. And then, if you haven't had enough of that, we've got the sequel, 500, year, 500 Years Later, which I will review, and then we've got the other sequels. <laughs> and then we've got, in the same world, with a lot of the same characters, a retelling of the Count of Monte Cristo here with the Baron of Magister Valley. And then we've got the entire Vladimir Taltos Assassin series. Oh, people, if you haven't been reading Stephen Brust, ah, just, just, you know, don't even consider yourself a reader anymore. Until you have. This is a fantastic little book. The Phoenix Guards. I hope I've got you jazzed not only about this, but about everything else in the realm of Dragaria and all of these wonderful books that Stephen Brust has written over the years. And he started writing these in the early 80s, and he's just he just keeps about every two or three years, he pumps out another one, and it's just brilliant. I can't wait for it. And you guys need to get on board because, man, this guy is the grandfather of hipster, new age, lies of Locke Lamora, name of the wind type stuff. This guy, Stephen Brust, was doing it way before those other guys were. I give the Phoenix Scars 9 out of 10. It is that entertaining. You will laugh. You will love it. You will laugh at, you will laugh at the characters. You will love the adventure. It's just magnificent.